are you? Welcome to my channel. This is Knitter's Life. This is my Knitter's Life series here on my channel, Whiskey and Wool. My name is Shannon. This is season three. I don't know what episode number. I just don't remember. And I've messed it up too many times. So anyway, thank you for dropping by and chatting with me a little bit today. Um, I am going to uh, have a pretty regular knitting episode here. Although um, towards the end, I think I'm going to, I'm gonna to speak to you a little bit about Rhinebeck, about my plant, my Rhinebeck plans. I am going to Rhinebeck um, this Saturday. And yeah, I'll talk to you about that towards the end. But for now, I wanted to jump right in and chat with you about my uh, tessellated vest, my finished object. This is the second tessellated vest that I've made. Um, I might actually take it off so I could show you closer, but um, I don't know, maybe you like this effect, though this is kind of a tweety effect. I do really love the fabric that this makes, um, that the that this stitch pattern makes. This is Tessellated Vest by Andrea Mowry. She um, made a vest and a pullover. I'm so glad I didn't do the pullover because making this vest was a bit of a slog um, for me. Like getting from, you had to bottom up, so getting from the rib up to the armhole was sloggy. Um, <laughs> what can I tell you about the pattern though? Um, this version, I made size four. Um, this version, I, I cast on the rib knit stitches for size three and then increased in the first round uh, up to the stitches that are necessary for size four. Um, I, that was just my preference, something that, um, I wanted to do for this knitting. Cause when I tried on my other one, I felt like there was too much fabric around where the rib is and I just wanted it to cinch in a little bit better. Um, and I'll put a picture in here of me. I wear, I wore this to work last week and I just styled it with some straight leg jeans and a button down shirt. Um, I'll probably have this on at Rhinebeck Ryan, this week. I'm not sure. Um, I'll definitely have it on for a little while for the tessellated vest meetup or tessellated pattern meetup, I think. I'll have to see how I'm feeling. The weather's supposed to be kind of crappy. Um, like I think we're getting rain or whatever, but I don't want to digress too much. Um, the, the yarn I use, the main color is this one. It is by Les Garcons. It is their British Sport and it is in the colorway Mora's Black Rose. It's a really beautiful, um, warm black color. This is, it, the pattern calls, this is the other thing, the pattern calls for two skeins, or I think around 700 yards or 600 yards of the main color. I didn't even use one skein, and I did knit my tessellated uh, an extra inch and a half longer, and most of that was in the ribbing. Um, so you would think, because I made a wider rib, I made a three inch rib instead of an um, inch and a half as the pattern calls for. Um, but nevertheless, I used just a dab of this. I only use this for the armhole and neck band. Um, I didn't knit my, I didn't knit the armholes with as many stitches as the pattern called for. I knit it with much fewer. Funny enough, it was the exact same amount of stitches on this one as it was on my other one. Uh, it just worked out that way. I, what I tend to do is just kind of cast on what seems right to me um, and then adjust. I try to do it equally, like, you know, equal number of stitches around. Um, but I'll go back and adjust if I'm, you know, if I'm off by a few stitches. But it turned out to be exactly the same. Um, yeah, I think it's really, really, really uh, beautiful fabric that you make with this this yarn. Um, I did knit with a spin cycle. Also, the pattern leads you to believe that you need two skeins. You don't really need, you only use a dab. So it's like 1.1 skein of spin cycle, 1.1 skein of the sport, at least with this sport one, which I think the meterage is pretty good. It's um, 300 yards or 330. I think it's three, almost 340 yards, because I think two skeins together is just over 700. No, so it's got to be like 360. So, 
And these are 200 yards, the dyed in the wool. This, this isn't all that I have left of the spin cycle that I used. I used a very gray tone. I used the colorway Castaway, but it was an ish tint. And I think before I said it was a second, but it wasn't. It was an ish tint, meaning that it didn't quite hit the color. So I think I'd, a couple episodes back, I'd shown on screen what Castaway is supposed to look like. It's supposed to have this like sort of, you know, um, bright blue with, mixed with a rusty color. And I definitely got the rust, which I think you can see right here in the fabric. Um, but I didn't really get the blue. It's more of a gray tone. Um, so I had a little bit of extra spin cycle, maybe like a quarter of a skein of a gray toned um, that I just used for my point one <laughs> skeins instead of using two full skeins. Um, and the third yarn that you use is um, a fuzzy yarn. I use Fua Fua um, by Moondrake in the colorway Sprouts. And you use about two thirds, I'd say, of the skein. It felt like I used more of this than I did of the other one. So you, one skein is fine um, of the fuzzy weight, but I love it so much. And you can see, like, this is a very bright green, but it doesn't look so bright when it's mixed in with that golden color. Kind of tones it down with the black and stuff. But um, I really like it. I will wear it quite a lot. It is certainly vest weather right now because we are having, um, you know, that transitional season here in the Northeast. I live in, in New Jersey. Can I still say Northern Jersey? Yeah, I'm in Northern New Jersey. I'm right across the river from the from New York City. Um, I have a beautiful view of New York City right outside my door. And yeah, it's pretty. You probably saw a clip. I think I always try to put a, I've been trying to put a clip in since I moved here um, of New York. And it's yeah, it's been it's been uh, it's been good. It's been good. So I think that's all I can tell you. I feel like a little out of it right now. I don't know why, like I'm not really coming across the way I should in my, in my episode here. Um, I'm sure I'll get into the groove and it'll all be fine when I'm editing. Um, yeah, so I live across the river, from across the Hudson River from New York City in New Jersey and we have a great view of the city. It's just beautiful. I pinch myself every time I look across. It's just oh, spectacular. I got home last night at in the evening and parked along right along the river and it just looking out across the water and seeing the boats with their lights on. It was so beautiful. I didn't film it though, so I'll leave it to your imagination. I'll film it sometime. Um, it's hard to film at night. I don't have a camera that's really good at night. I just would be using my cell phone. Uh, all right, I'm going to move along to whips. Um, and thank goodness I wasn't in the middle of the row. I've made quite a lot of progress on this next one. Um, this one's kind of confusing me, though, I have to say. All right, so this is the Chevronopolis by Maxim Sear. And it is a shawl slash cozy neck piece so pretty oh my goodness it looks so great on screen um yeah so I've done quite a bit I think I was still down in the turquoise section down here um last time that I filmed and I am up I've made a couple color changes I'm working on this section now that is like a burgundy and gray section in this self-striping hand spun that I'm using in this pattern um and I'm also on the th I only have two more sections to go. I'm on the second to last section. That's right. I just started it. This little stitch marker is showing that I just started the second to last section. So what is confusing me about it, it I mean, it just kind of looks like a giant size bandana right now. So what's confusing me is like how just doing two more sections is going to make it that much bigger. Um, I did see in the project notes that people did extra sections so I may do extra sections because I was I was figuring out that with two full two more full sections I'm going to get well I guess it'll be like this much longer another foot 
longer. Um, and I would judge it to be maybe not even a yard. It's not even three feet right now. So if I'm going to get another foot, maybe I'll get like four and a half feet. So if I do an extra section, I'll get another six or eight inches. Of course, I have to block it too. So I do think I'm going to do an extra section. Um, I said it was Chevron Op Opolis by Maxim Sear, right? And I probably put a picture on screen. Um, I am using... I had this like weird thought yesterday when I was working on this that maybe I was supposed to use sport weight, but I'm using fingering weight. I don't think I am. I think I'm supposed to use fingering weight, although I think he used a spin cycle in his pattern, which is the dyed in the wool is a um, sport weight technically. Um, so I am using Magpie Fibers Swanky Sock in the colorway Winter Solstice from 2021. And I'm using a self-striping hand-spun yarn. Um, I'm on this burgundy section right here, and then you can see it goes back to a pretty bright green and then a bright turquoise. I have two more skeins of that and two more skeins of this. I have two more skeins of each. And this pattern was supposed to use two full skeins, so I, I'm still, I remain confused over why I still have a significant amount of the first skein of each of these colors, and I'm close to being finished. So I, I don't know, it almost made me wish um, what the, I don't think this is giving away too much, but you are increasing over here on this side of the pattern, clearly. Um, each row you're like doing your increases over here. I wish I did more increases on this side just to make it more shawl-like because I definitely, it has the depth, it has good depth for a shawl and it's going to have really good depth for a shawl. Just don't I think the width is kind of off and I guess for just a piece that goes around your neck it's fine but this is a gift so I'm a little that's why I'm like a little like hmm. I really wanted to give this is for one of my sons I wanted to give him a very generous piece that he could wrap around his neck a couple times um, so yeah I don't know it's it's mosaic stitch <laughs> it's a very hefty um, stitch pattern although I learned the repeat pretty quickly within a within one repeat two repeats I had by two repeats by the end of two repeats I pretty much had the rhythm of how to do the stitch so I didn't have to look at the directions anymore and now I'm not looking at them at all I just go ahead and knit away um, so it is mosaic and being that it's mosaic it will stretch it will grow quite a bit in the blocking but I don't know if I can expect it to like go from two and a half feet to six feet <laughs> ah, all right well we'll see anyway it's coming out I love the way the colors are striping I think it's coming out really beautiful I can't wait for that pop of green up here and uh, yeah, I have not looked at the other two skeins of that self-striping yarn in quite some time. So I, yeah, I don't know. I don't remember what they're what they look like, but that'll be fun um, to get a couple more in. And maybe maybe I should start increasing more now. Would that look weird? I don't know. I don't think it would really. Right? I can always even it out in blocking. I just might do that because this is pretty much stretched out. That's it. So I got the whole thing on screen. That's the whole piece right there. It's more triangular, like even side triangular than I expected. I thought it would just be more, I thought it would be more like one really long side and two shorter sides, but So that is a uh, Chevronopolis. So yeah, I may I may do that. I may just within this repeat section just throw in some extra increases over here to just kind of make it grow a little faster. I think that might be a good idea. I showed you the um, yeah, I showed you the yarns. We're all set. 
feel very distracted. I guess that's what it is. I'm a little distracted. I have the window open, so hopefully you're not getting too much outdoor sounds. I hear helicopters and stuff, because um, I'm filming on a Monday, which I usually film on a weekend, but I was away with this past weekend, and um, I didn't take any film clips except of some food that we ate. Um, I was at a friend's house, and it poured all weekend, and uh, I don't know what it is about rainy weather. Um, this next one I have is a new cast on that I wanted to share with you. I teased about this last time, so, and I think you were all pretty excited and interested in it. Um, this is the Rumble Raglan by Lydia Morrow. And here is where I'm at so far. I'm very close to where the, um, the body will split for sleeves. I don't want to pull it too much because I'll end up pulling stitches off. But yeah, so I went ahead and cast on the pink version just because I thought it was more like now appropriate with its sort of Halloween-y colors, those like shots of black. And I mean, that's literally legit like a Halloween color yarn <laughs> that I'm using. Um, the uh, the thing that caught my eye about Rumble Raglan, besides like it's just really a cool design, I really love the design, but also just this, when I looked at the requirements, it was three random skeins, and you know I have a ton of single skeins, like just a single skein of a color without, like with this, I don't know what I was thinking I was doing, like making 20 dozen Stephen West shawls or something, I don't know. Um, so, or, a, you know, a hundred pair of socks, <laughs> something like that. But anyway, I have a lot of single skeins, so I was super delighted to um, see a sweater that I could make using some of those single skeins. And, um, yeah, so that is what I, that was what attracted me to it. Um, I spoke about this last week, I think, that I'm a little nervous about the negative ease so this is a pattern that you're meant to oh, I dropped some stitches hang on one sec I'm just gonna pick those up um, this is a pattern where you're meant to knit it with 10 inches of negative ease so I was nervous about that I don't mind a little negative ease across my bust line but I don't really want negative ease around my middle around my middle-aged belly um, at all <laughs> I really want things to kind of be loose and flowy down there um, so I decided to knit the size that would give me, I think around one inch negative ease across my bust, which I know should give me some, um, enough, enough positive ease around my middle where I'll feel comfortable. So, um, I'm knitting the size six and the other modification I did, which I think you can, it's pretty visible even in this weird state that it's sitting in. I did a series of double increases in the very beginning of the raglan section to build out the shoulder because my shoulders are more um, square shaped than sloped. Like some people have narrow sloped shoulders, that's not me. Um, so I didn't want to feel constricted in this area, across this area right here. So I built out um, the raglan to have more increases at the top and then that will also allow me to shorten the yoke because um, as we talked about when I showed my Busan sweater last time, last episode, with its very, very dropped um, armhole, I don't want a very dropped armhole. I want it to be a little um, less dropped, especially if it's going to be a more fitted sweater um, or a more a close fitting sweater. I think a more snug armhole just makes more sense. So, um, yeah, so that'll also those doing, doing more rapid increases up at the top will allow me to shorten the yoke and bring that up a bit. So, um, yeah, I'm about, I would say about an inch away from doing the split. And I think my yoke is reading about eight, eight and a half inches right now. So, um, It'll probably finish out around nine and a half um, inches. But, oh, so good, right? So, so good. 
I know many of you wanted me to do the green version. I want to do the green version very badly. In fact, after I was done filming last week or two weeks ago, I caked all of those mini skeins. So those are all ready for me to go. I am planning on casting it on as soon as I know that the modifications that I made worked. Um, so it may be until this is done. I'm not sure. I think once I get, although once I split for the sleeves, I can probably slip this on Martha, my mannequin, who's not here this week either because there was nothing for her to wear. Um, but she'll be back next time because there'll be stuff for her to wear. She, I can probably slip this on her and get a good idea of whether or not my modifications are, have worked, um, even before I block it. So once I see that, I'll be able to cast on the other one. So yeah, let me talk to you about the yarns. Oh, I also have this in my very fun Halloween bag from Fat Scroll Fiber Company. I just love it so much. It matches. This is like a very Maxim see your moment. If you watch Le Garçon's Happy Hour, you'll know that Max likes to match his project to his project bag. Um, I don't have the, the luxury of having that many project bags that everything matches, but um, I do tend to knit similar colors, but this was just adorable. I had to have it. I bought it last year, or maybe the year before even, a couple years back. Um, but yeah, I love it. It's nice, generous size. I even have my pattern in here. Um, <laughs> so yeah, really good. Um, all right, let's start with the exciting Halloween-y yarn. This is from Vita Lifestyle. It is called Halloween Town, and I bought it in 2021 at her, um, at a, at Cake Wool, at the first Cake Wool. And then the solids that I'm using are semi-solid, tonal colors, I should say, that I'm using. I have three Lobby and May colors that I'm using. Um, this is Pinku, this is Ichigo, and this one is Calcifer. So this is part of her uh, Miziaki series. Like she's doing a series every six months or so. She does a new color based on one of the Miziaki um, Studio Ghibli films, so which I love and my sons love. So um, I've been collecting those colors and using. I've used this one. I actually think the rest of them I just have stashed because I love them. They're so beautiful, and I feel like they need a special project. But anyway, these are the three colors. What I decided to do, since these three solids or tonals weren't full skeins, and you need pretty much like I think three. 300, 350 yards of each color. Plus I did modifications that is probably gonna eat up a little more yarn, like doing more rapid increases up here, obviously, is gonna make the entire circumference bigger. Um, so I'm using a little bit more yarn. So I really probably needed three full skeins of yarn um, for this pattern. So what I decided to do, since this was about a uh, little less than 300, about 270, I put this color together, so I'm treating these two as one color, and then this color I had about 350, so I feel comfortable with that, and the um, Halloween color is 460 yards because it's a sock yarn, a 75-25 sock yarn. These are all um, cashmerino base yarns, so I think they're cashmere, merino, nylon. I want to say they're a little heavier on the, I don't think I have a tag, no. A little heavier on cashmere than a MCN, like a 80 10 10. I think they're like, they may be a 70 20 10, something like that. So, yeah, I just decided to put those two colors together, which is what you're seeing here. Um, so, what you're, so what I'm doing, like, is alternating using the um, calcifer color with the pink hue color. So, the next time I'm supposed to um, alternate in. The bright pink instead I'll be using this the red tone color but overall I really I think it really is working the colors are working really well together bear in mind this is unblocked so when everything's blocked it'll it'll pull open and look more like the pattern it's pretty cool though right I love it oh my gosh I dropped more stitches well, I'm just gonna take a minute to pick those up there we go, everything back where it should be. But this has been such a fun knit. It's really fun to watch it come together. And I was just thinking to myself last night when I was knitting on it, I was like, oh, this is really like this, 
you reach that point when you're making your your round yolks right or your raglan yolks that you're just like oh my god it's like I don't know 400 stitches and it just takes forever to make it around I'm at that point with this but I'm also like within about six rows of being done with that part and then on to the body where it'll it'll go much faster so so excited about that and I wish this was going to be done for Rhinebeck because I would totally wear it. I'm probably actually going to wear my Busan sweater if it's cold enough. Um, so I may do the Busan in the morning and maybe switch to this for the afternoon because I think it's supposed to warm up as the day progresses. We'll see. I have a new cast on. Old pattern, new cast on. Old, old pattern in that I've made many of these before. So I decided to, instead of doing um, an, another pair of socks, I decided to take a break, shake it up a little bit, and make a hat instead. So I'm doing the Manhattan hat by Tori Yu. It is Tori Yu, right? Yeah, I got this weird feeling that maybe it was Connie Yu, but I think it's Tori Yu. <laughs> um, and I decided to use this self-striping yarn that I made, hand spun that I made um, earlier this year. I tried chain plying for the first time to um, get this pattern laid out. And so I ended up making two skeins and chain plying both of them. They were, it was a four ounce braid that I had that was these colors. And I made two skeins that, the, the repeat actually starts here. This was just some extra that happened at the end of that skein that I just like, whatever, put together. But the repeat goes from the purple to the green and then starts again. So um, I made two skeins thinking I might make socks. But then when I after I finished it, I knew it had to be a hat. So <laughs> I am um, about an inch away from having the total body of the hat done. This is the... Um, this hat gets a triple bend, and I know like maybe this hat isn't the best for showing off the stripes, but I still just love it. So it's probably gonna end up looking something like this on the head, like rolled like that. And then there'll be that pink and, and lime green finishing off the crown. Um, but yeah. yeah, I think I'll pretty much use up, just so you can see, I'm pulling from the center. I think I'll pretty much use up most of this. I may have a dab of this, this like sort of scummy lime green. I really, really love that color. I just think these colors are just like unex an unexpected combo and I really love them. And I would totally wear this with this <laughs> vest at Rhinebeck this weekend. I will finish this before Rhinebeck. So if it's cold enough, I'm going to have this hat on too because it's just, too good. It's just different enough and cool looking enough that I feel like it deserves to be worn. Um, so yeah, I love this hat pattern. This has been my go-to hat pattern for the last year or so when I um, first knit it and I just dropped something. Um, yeah, I really, really love it. Super comfortable. I dropped my coaster that my water was sitting on, so I'm not sure where to put it. Hmm, I'll put it here. Where I hopefully won't knock it over. Um, oh, and now the coaster is cold. Uh, okay, so that is my, that's all my knitting. I, um, I got a lot of acquisitions this past couple weeks. Uh, a couple things that I had just ordered on a whim. Oh, before I show that, I do have spinning. Yay! <laughs> I spun a little bit. Um, the, the stripey thing that I just showed you was from this company, this uh, hand, dyer, hand dyer named Julie, and she does Julie's, it's called Julie's Hand Spun. And it was a BFL blend. I ran into her at um, New Jersey Sheep and Wool in September of last year. I didn't go this year because it just didn't work out for me timing wise. Like I just couldn't figure out how to get there. And I've also been trying to not buy any stuff. And I know I, I knew I was going to Rhinebeck. So I wanted to make sure that I um, saved my dollars for that. But then, you know, I ended up 
I'll show you. You'll understand why I bought what I bought, I think, I hope. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to spend Julie, the other braid that I bought from Julie last year, and it is, it's this one. I decided to do a um, two-ply fractal spin instead of doing chain ply, because I just kind of wanted that color change to be more subtle and a little more blendy with um, these colors. Because this was a pink, a pale pink, yellow, and a sage green. I was thinking there was another color in there, but I think that was it. Yeah, I think it was just those colors. So I just didn't feel like that would look so good in, a, in bold stripes the way um, this one did. This is also hers. So I just decided to do a more blendy skein that maybe I could use in some color work or something like that. So um, this turned out to be a fingering weight. It's about 360 yards. Um, a very soft, squishy, fun yarn. So also BFL. And she was so inexpensive. I, I don't know where she lives, um, but I assume somewhere in Jersey. Um, but yeah, she also does rabbits she's got rabbit fur exotic fibers um can't really read her thing here very well custom blends yeah she's somewhere in jersey i want to say or maybe it could be delaware i'm not sure um but she you can find her on through ravelry and stuff um but yeah that that those braids were really really reasonably priced but they may have been show specials too. I don't know. I don't remember um, since it was last year. And so Hi. Okay. A little bit of a disruption to the flow of the video. Um, la I filmed it yesterday at, with the window open. And last night when I was editing, this entire section where I talked about my stash um, had this beeping truck in it. Like, a you know, that backup beep that trucks have like through the whole thing. And it was driving me crazy. So I'm sure it would have driven you crazy. So I just decided to re-record. Um, I had a day off today because I um, had to do my, you know, my annual medical exam. So it works out. So anyway, in the upcoming segment after Stash Positions, I'm going to be saying that I'm going to be talking about Rhinebeck and um, the uh, a couple other things, not to spoil it. Um, but I mentioned the Busan sweater. This is what I want to wear to Rhinebeck if it's cool enough. I'm not sure what the weather's going to do. Um, but I actually think I'm going to be able to wear it in the morning. And then I'll switch. I'll change into the vest that I was wearing through most of this episode. All right. So just a quick little stash acquisition. I actually got a lot of stash um, the last couple weeks in the, you know, since the last time I recorded, surprisingly. Um, some was, it was a surprise to me too, because I am trying not to buy too much. So this is actually what I'm going to show you is probably more than, or about the same as what I'll bring home from Rhinebeck. But, um, I, Lobby and MA launched fiber for the first time. And, um, this is a special blend of, um, Merino, Shetland, and her waist, um, her, like th leftover threads and stuff of her normal colors and it is based on the color confetti that she's been doing the yarn color confetti so I thought I just had to I had to it's so beautiful I I mean it seemed I who knows when she's going to do it again if it'll be a regular in her shop I mean if, she, if it's like the yarn she'll be changing up the colors and I just really love the gray so I mean it's just beautiful it's just such a beautiful warm gray tone and I mean, I hope you're seeing it. The light's kind of weird right now. There you go. You get a good, it's a little bit, it's not, um, it's a little cooler looking on screen than it actually is, but it's funny. The colors <laughs> that are popping in here are similar to the colors that are popping on my, on my sweater. So yes, super excited to give this a spin, so to speak. I just wanted to make sure I did the, yes, 20% recycled LBA um, strands and all those LBA colors. So, so fun. And that'll, that'll probably be, I'm going to spin it in a two ply, um, fingering weight and it'll be a main color of some future project. I also ordered, 
um, from Mustache Yarns, the uh, Stacy of Mustache Yarns. She's known for her, I actually don't know if she does anything other than self-striping. I only have bought self-striping yarn from her. Um, and this was a special Christmas colorway called A Very Hobbit Christmas. Very Hobbit Christmas in her Everyday DK. And it says match set, so that means it's two skeins that will match each other perfectly. So you can knit one sock with one skein and one sock with the other, two 50 gram or 60 gram skeins. Um, yeah, she had this color and then she sold out and then she had it again. And it's super hard to get DK from her because she doesn't do DK in every color. Um, and as you know, I love knitting socks with DK. That's my go-to sock yarn. And um, cause I just like the thickness of it on my foot and my sons, everyone who I gift the socks to seems to also enjoy that. I just really like that squishiness. I think that's why I like to knit with hand spun for socks as well. Cause it's a little squishier than the really finely spun fingering weight sock yarn that we normally see. So anyway, I just went ahead and pulled the trigger. I know it was a, a splurge, but I figured worth it, worth it. Um, last, I bought some skeins in preparation to make the Stripey Unicorn that Hohi Locatelli just released on Thursday. As soon as she released the pattern, um, I purchased yarn. Did I, actually, no. She released the details of the pattern about a week ago today, so like Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday of last week, and she released the, enough details so that you could buy the yarn. So I went digging through my stash to find what spin cycle yarn I might have. I'll sh I'll, we'll get back to these very gorgeous um, Le Garçon skeins in one sec. So she released the details, sport weight sweater, and it's a micro stripe. I probably already put a, a picture on screen. So I went through my spin cycle stash because I have a stash of spin cycle and I had enough for of three different colors or two colors. Sorry, I had three skeins of two different colors that would get me through um, that sweater. One of one set is more in the red family. It's Ghost Ranch and maybe Rusted Rainbow or whatever, but they all kind of go together. Um, cause I think I have two ghost ranch and one rusted rainbow. And then there were these three. These are two skeins of deep bump and one skein of summer something, summer love maybe, or summer, summer something. This one, this one is summer, but you know, the colors in this, they're the same. Um, they're very, very, very similar. This has a little, this has a small section of dark green, which it doesn't normally have, as far as I can tell. It's usually gray, which is in the center there. Um, but this, so this skein is primarily gold, and these, this one, this deep bump is primarily gold. These are both deep bump. This is probably more classic deep bump to me, because I, I knit with deep bump before. Um, this one's a little yellower. I don't have the tag, so I don't know whether it's a second or an ish tint or whatever. Um, ish tints, I didn't talk about this because I, I did use ish tints in my vest, in the vest that I was wearing, that I'll be wearing again towards the end here. Um, ish tints are from Ritual Dyes. Uh, they are, they, you can buy them from Mitchell Dyes. They're made by Spin Cycle, but they're just kind of off. Like the colors didn't come out quite right. So they're ish. They're like castaway ish, you know, deep bump ish. So this might be a deep bump ish, but I don't think so. Um, it just is a little warmer toned one than this one. But I think together they're going to work just fine. So, okay. Once I determined these were the ones I wanted to work with, not the redder ones, not the red toned ones. They're like red and gold and they have like a little bit of gray in them. I picked, oops, I put all those down, but I'll, I'll pick them back up again. I picked um, this sport weight yarn to for the main color. Um, it is uh, Le Garçon British Sport in the colorway Edith's Butler. I sure hope you're seeing the color well. It's a deep dark teal that just is going to go beautifully with these spin cycles. 
even this one, I was a little worried that this dark green on the outside might not contrast, but it will because there's so much gold in it. So it'll, it'll actually look fine. Although I'm not gonna use this up top. I think I'm gonna actually start the sweater and I'm gonna cast this on <laughs> as soon as I have a couple hours to make it through those short rows that you do. She's got a new technique of doing short rows, so I'm excited to try that out. Um, you read about it in the pattern if you get it. So I, um, I'm i gonna cake these and cast on. I would do it this weekend if it weren't for Rhinebeck. But speaking of Rhinebeck, I'm going to put you, can reconnect this video to the rest of what I filmed yesterday. And um, I will talk about Rhinebeck um, as well as a couple other things. And there is a whiskey chat. So I'm gonna, in editing magic, put it all together. So it should be great. Anyway, see you soon. Oh my God. So I didn't even talk about what's going on in the news as I intended to. Um, both the, the confusion with the MCAL, but also um, the devastating terrorist attacks that happened in Israel um, and the continuing devastation that is happening in Gaza. It is, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot to process. It's mind-numbing and horrifying and I yeah I wish there was peace in that region I wish there was peace in it in worldwide and that everyone had the opportunity to be a good human <laughs> and was a good human and is a good human um but yeah I'm sorry if you're um if you're encountering some pain from any of the stuff that's happening um it's yeah it's a lot it's but it's a lot it's been it's consumed a lot it consumed a lot of my time last week um and a lot of my energy due to where i work i work at a i work at an academic institution at a big university and yeah it was a lot of the conversations i didn't go into any meeting last week without having some spending time talking about it and asking if everyone's okay and um yeah that just the kind putting forward kindness um instead of my own thoughts and stuff just putting a forward a forward a kind a kind foot um, anyway, yeah, so that, and then also the MCAL, it was weird that that kind of came together with, you know, or happened just the week before those attacks and, um, the hate symbol that manifested on the shawl, the MCAL, it, it was once again quite happy that I did not, with myself, quite, quite, quite relieved that I did not partake in that MCAL and um, but although I've got to say like the variations that are coming out when he did when he reduced it down to a very simple recipe it sort of like opened up the floodgates of creativity I thought like some just from I mean I'm sitting on the side watching I'm not participating so it's easier for me to be a little more objective I guess than those who participated that maybe were were upset about having to re- reboot their start like rip out and start over um or just put aside as he suggested um if you don't know what i'm talking about you can see it on uh steven says it himself talks about it himself on a couple in a couple of videos um labeled uh clue one new direction his new direction video in particular i think is very informative about why he made the decisions that he made and why he um chose to why he's asking uh, was asking everyone to please um, accept the new clue one, um, but the yeah the floodgates opened and my goodness there's some beautiful variations like I just oh it's so cool like I love the ones with crochet or where people really like somebody took another I saw one version where someone had done like squares that shifted I mean it just blows my mind that someone came up with this way of like creating this three-day shift if you just if you're curious and you want to see the 
the uh, variations. I think the best way is to either look at them on Ravelry. I think Stephen made a thread that was for modifications and variations of the shawl. And he also, also on Instagram, if you just follow the hashtag GeogradientMCAL, you'll see all the variations too. You'll, if people tag them, you'll see many of those variations. He's been tagging them too. So you can see them that way. But wow, really, really cool. Um, I'm still, I'm not going to jump in because I don't have the yarn and I don't plan to um, make that. Maybe in the new year it might be something that I'll put on my radar just seeing how it all shakes out. Also, I have a huge girl crush on Millie of Tribe Yarn and Millie always does some amazing variation to the Stephen West MCAL. She loves it and she usually she usually jumps in in the third week and she knits very fast it seems to me like she gets through her project very quickly um, and I'm always blown away by what she does so I'm super curious to see where she goes with it and then I might copy her because <laughs> I just love her so much. I love her energy and I love the way the, the variations that she does and stuff they're just super cool. Um, so I, uh, other than that, I was going to talk to you, chat with you a tiny bit about, um, Rhinebeck about, I thought I might do a little knitting while I do it. Um, so I am going to Rhinebeck on Saturday. I'm not doing any of the pre-events because I find that those pre-events, although Wool and Folk, I think try, really tries to make it more than a shopping experience, but to me, like Cake Wool and Wool and Folk and, um, the Indie Dyer, what is it, Indie Untangled, and I actually have not even paid much attention to all the other. I think there's also a Knitting Bazaar event, too. I know there's a, another new event because I saw stuff about it on Friday. Those are not Rhinebeck's New York Sheep and Wool's events. Those are events run by independent people who... Um, want to just offer different ways because it's very difficult to get into Rhinebeck as a vendor. It's just a, it's one, it's a different way for people to, um, you know, businesses to offer their, their yarns and stuff, their products. So, um, I'm not going to any of those because those to me seem very shopping oriented and I don't really want to go for the shopping experience so much as I just want to go for the social experience, but I am going to do a little shopping. <laughs> so I'm planning to get there when the gates open at 9 a.m. Um, I'm going to try to aim to get there at 8.30 so I can get a good parking spot. And, um, well, I mean, all the parking's fine, so don't worry about that. You don't have to worry about that. I just want to park close because I know I'm going to be changing my clothes um, or changing my sweater midstream. So um, I... I'm planning to get there early. I really want to buy fiber from Lube Fiber Studio. I had her on my list for Vogue because I know she does Vogue Knitting Live always and she always does Rhinebeck. She makes these those beautiful fiber bumps that I use to make the self-striping yarn that I'm using in the shawl that I showed earlier in the Chevronopolis. So um, I want to buy two fiber bumps from her and I know she... Not that she sells out, but the selection gets progressively worse <laughs> as the day progresses and people grab what they want. And I know if I get there within the first hour of the gates opening, I'll have a really good selection. She, I really want to buy a rainbow one from her because she makes some pretty rainbows. And uh, I know those sell out. So I really want to get a rainbow one. And I'm thinking I'm going to get something in the yellow family, like a yellow tonal something. I don't know. I have this idea to put those two together in a, in a single, in like to apply those together. So we'll see, see how that goes. See, see what I find from her. So, but I have in my, in my budget two fiber bumps from her, from staff of um, Loop Fiber Studio. And I really, other than that, I'm really just going to uh, walk around and see what I see, see what's interesting. And if I am so inspired, I may buy a sweaters quantity, um, in either fingering or DK weight just to stash. Um, cause I don't have any pattern in mind. Um, other than, you know, maybe I'll buy some sport yarn 
sport weight if I see it for um, another stripy unicorn. Like to me, Rhinebeck is really all about the farm yarns. Like I go for the farm yarns because the indie dyed yarns, there's there are a handful of indie dyers that go and indie producers, which I love, but farms are also indie producers generally. So um, there's a couple farm yarns that I'm interested in. Wing and a Prayer is one. I have a gift gift card for, from them, so I may, I've been holding on to it because although Tammy does a great job, Tammy White of Wing and a Prayer does a great job on her website, I thought it would be fun to pick it out in person and I know she's almost always at she's always at Rhinebeck and I think she generally goes to Vogue Knitting Live in New York as well or she finds like an angle like some she doesn't have her own booth but she'll her yarn will be there so I'm gonna I want to check that out too but I'm not I don't feel like I need to run over to that booth in in the very beginning I just like to get there early because the booths usually aren't as crowded um, up until lunchtime, they're not as crowded. So um, I'm going to probably spend the afternoon hours uh, after I eat lunch doing social stuff. So like being on the hill, meeting people. Hopefully it's not pouring rain. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm excited. There's I really would like to see the boys, the Lake Garçon boys. I have not ever met them in person, but I would like to. Um, I'm a fan of theirs. I, I'm, um, of course, I, I often see Amy of Lobby and Amaze. She comes to many events, and she will be there. Andrea is always there. Andrea will do the, Andrea does poses for pictures. She's like a real professional act. So if you've never been to Rhinebeck and you're planning to go, the hill, it's not really much of a hill, but it's like this little slope that's not too far from the entrance that has a row of benches at the very top. But knitters all tend to gather on this hill and socialize. Um, and it's a lot of like kind of awkward socializing because you're like sitting right, and you're looking at these people that you just saw that you've only, that you only know through like social media, you know, through YouTube or Instagram. And um, generally everyone's very welcoming and we're all feeling awkward and weird. Like there are so many times where I'm like going, oh, look, and uh, yeah. It's, it's fun though. It's just fun to hang out. And like I was going to say about Andrea, she will stand in one spot and knitter after knitter will go pose with her. And, um, you know, it's, it's weird and awkward for her too, you know, but she's gracious. She's, she knows how to handle it. You know, she'll say, you know, if you just pop up in front of her, she's like, come, let's pose for a picture. And then she'll stand and someone will take your picture. Um, and yeah. And then, you know, she's, She's fun. She's just like everyone else. She's a person, you know, even though we get all starry eyed, you know. So, yeah, that is my plan. And I made some some plans to shop with a friend in the morning. So I'm going to be shopping with Lorian um, of Yarn Love Turtle on Instagram. She does a lot of Instagram lives. If you're not familiar, if you don't follow um, where she talks about her knitting projects. She knits so much and so many, like so fast. Like she, I'm blown away by how fast she gets through her projects and they're all so beautiful and I'm inspired every time I see something that she's making. So I'm excited to shop with her. She has a list of places she wants to go and she also likes the farm yarns like I do. So that'll be a fun trip. And I have a couple things that she didn't mention in her live that I'm curious if she knows about. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I'll probably hit Dusty Buttons, too, the button booth. Um, even though I don't really, I can't think of any buttons that I need. Um, it's always just fun to look, right? And I'll see what else I see. I mean, who knows? I'll be shopping for Christmas gifts, too. So, I'll share everything with you. I'll do a special Rhinebeck episode. It'll be one of my lost episodes, I think. Or maybe one of my lost episodes will just be lambs playing. I don't know. <laughs> Because the animals are so fun too. I love to spend time in the animal area. So I'll probably do that after Lorian leaves because she's on a tight schedule. So um, I'll probably wander those animal booths um, later in the day. And yeah, I'm just so excited. So, so excited to go and see, see people and just oh, 
the woolly fibers and all of that, yeah. And I, I do wish, there are some friends that I know are going on Friday and I do wish I could, I had the fortitude to do two days, but I just don't. I just don't have the bandwidth or fortitude to make it through two days of that, even though I'm so excited about the one. I just, like, it's good to know your limits, right? <laughs> But anyway, I um, I did do some footage of a Whiskey Chat two weeks ago when I last filmed, and I just decided not to put it in because I didn't think the footage was so good. So there might be a Whiskey Chat here. If not, it'll be the end, and um, I'll sign off. But Because I'm, I'm going to check it out again and see if it's any good. I didn't throw it away, but I just didn't like the way it was lit. Like, the lighting was kind of bad, and... Um, I mean, the chat was fine. The chat part was fine. It was just the lighting. I filmed it in my kitchen at night, and it was, yeah, I don't know. It just didn't look good, I didn't think. So I won't do that again. I won't choose that location again. But this is this may, be, may or may not be a whiskey chat, um, just to give you an idea if you're newer here, if, you're, if you don't remember uh, or if you had not seen a whiskey or gin chat. I do have a new gin that I've been wanting to try, but to be honest, like, I've just been drinking less. Like, I just haven't been... Um, pouring a, a cocktail for myself as frequently as as maybe I did before I don't know I mean maybe I just have a lot I'm a little bit busier since I moved and yeah so I just haven't had I haven't been inspired <laughs> to to uh, to do that um, but I'll I, I know I'll intersperse it here and there um, for you so you can you can see them but um, if there's not a whiskey chat, there'll be some a couple cat shenanigans that you'll will close out this video. And I look forward to sharing Ryan Beck with you next week. So I hope you have a good week and I hope your family is safe and your loved ones are, are safe. And um, yeah, thank you for being here. And I will speak to you again real soon. Bye. Hey, I'm going to do a little whiskey chat. I brought you into my cute kitchen. Don't don't look too close because things are a little janky. <laughs> but um, I'm about to make the cookies that I was talking about. That's why my mixer's behind me. But um, yeah, I thought it'd just be fun to have a different location. So we are going to taste. Hopefully you didn't hear that as I banged the microphone. Um, we're going to taste Tullamore Dew, which is an Irish whiskey. This one is the Caribbean Rum Cask Finish, which I don't see so often. I see the one with the green label, but not this one, which has a like pale yellow um, label. Um, I hope the lighting is okay in here. It's a little, <laughs> it's a dark day, dark, dark afternoon. Um, anyway, uh, I put it in a wee dram. So you can see, this is actually pretty good. We can see the color, it pretty much matches my counters. Um, what can I tell you about Telemore? I'm a little rusty doing these chats, so, um, but it is whiskey season because it's fall and we tend to drink uh, whiskey. I don't know why, but people tend to drink whiskey more in the fall than in the, I mean, the true whiskey drinkers drink it all year round, but um, yeah, <laughs> my, my, my little, my little guy, Egg, he's creeping around. He's wondering why there's a camera in here. Very funny. Um, anyway, I looked them up online. They are located in Ireland in the town of Tullamore. Um, I don't recall the exact location, but I'll put a map on screen of Ireland with a pinpoint that shows where they are. Um, so it's Irish whiskey, not Scotch uh, whiskey. So there's an E in between the K and Y. That's done to that was done originally to distinguish between Scot Scottish whiskey and Irish whiskey. The Irish say that it's because the Irish was the Irish whiskies were superior. The Scotch whiskies who <laughs> makers the Scottish people say the opposite. I'm sure there's plenty of opinions out there. Anyway, that's supposedly where it came from. Um, I've heard it said that um, the whiskey without the E is absolutely a Scottish term and no one else can use it. <laughs> that's the way I learned it. Um, anyway, they're located, they have a pretty robust website. They have an Irish wolfhound uh, mascot named Isabel. 
Um, so there's a very sweet video about Isabel. She's um, Irish Wolfhounds. I think if you watch Emma from, um, she's in, she lives in Northern Ireland. She has an Irish Wolfhound, Woolly Mammoth Fiber Company. She has a her dog Rufus. I'm pretty sure it's an Irish Irish Wolfhound. Um, but yeah, they were established in 1829, so they've been around a good long while. Um, about as long as most of the um, Scottish distilleries that we've looked at. Um, they were founded by the, the DEW Do. It's actually DEW, not Do. I said Do because that's the way it looks here on the label. Um, the DEW stand is there are the initials of their founder of their founding distiller. Um, I clicked off of his story and I'm on their whiskeys now. So hang on one sec. Let me just pull it together. Established in 1829, the result of a family vision. Um, and so the guy's name, the founding man's name was, he was Daniel E. Williams. So he was uh, the one who brought all the prosperity to um, the county and to the town and um, stuff like that. They, the <laughs> distillery currently refers to him as the Ireland's original hipster. I didn't find very much information about um, who owns the place now, whether it's descendants of his or if it's owned by um, a corporation. I, I suspect it's owned by a corporation. I think any whiskey that has wide reach either had help from a distributor who really believed in them or their, um, you know, they had the help of a corporation that has longer, deeper pockets and longer reach. Um, anyway, let's, um, <laughs> let's, let's taste it. Let's taste. Hope that's not too distracting there. All right. First I smell, oh, um, the, this is an ounce, not a full shot. Um, a shot's an ounce and a half. I used this tasting dram that I've had for a long, long time, and um, I just put a couple drops of water to open up the scents and the taste. Oh my gosh, okay. This is rum cask, so I should start by saying this, um, I think it's distilled three times. Wait, let me look it up for you. It smells very fruity. So rum casks, that means like the last six months or so at least were part of the process. Let's see, I think I have it here. It says, the rum cask finish pays tribute to the role of Irish immigrants in the development of rum in the Caribbean in the 17th century, Irish heart and Caribbean soul. Um, we carefully select barrels previously used to age Demaria rum to impart their distinctive tropical fruit flavor. So anytime, there's a rum cask finish, you're gonna get like tropical fruit flavors. So usually it's like banana and coconut and pineapple, things like that. A sherry finish will give you like red fruit um, flavors like berry, plum, things like that. Um, so right, rum cask. So let me smell. I smell caramel and banana. I smell alcohol. <laughs> sweet. This is going to be a sweet whiskey, I have a feeling. So let me taste it. Oh, whoa. It's like a tropical fruit basket. There's definitely citrus in there. I want to say orange, actually. It might be something more subtle, like... um, um it may be pineapple. That might be what I'm smelling, what I'm tasting. It's kind of on the sweet side. There's very definitely, um, uh, this is very definitely a sweet whiskey. So I'm so happy that this is what I'm going to be sipping while I make cookies. <laughs> I'm trying to think what the finish is. It almost, there's a slight chocolatey taste, but it might be more less cocoa, more like white chocolate almost, like a creaminess. There's a, a definite creaminess to it. 
All right, I like to see what um, the distillery itself says about it, about the flavor, and then go see what the um, experts say. So let me just, I forgot to pull up the expert uh, review. Yes, this one. Um, all right, let's see what they say first. They say fruity, sweet, tropical flavors um, bring delicious caramel and banana. <laughs> Hint of dates, I didn't catch that, and raisins in this expertly blended and flavorful Caribbean um, mix. They recommend it drinking it straight or in a cocktail such as a daiquiri style that you would make with the whiskey <laughs> instead of rum. Um, all right. Let's see, I have my, yes, cool. I found Flavier, which is one of my favorite um, places to see their reviews because they give the nice um, flavor spiral. Oh, this is really affordable. This is only a $30 bottle versus like some of the more expensive Scotch whiskeys that I've tasted in the past, which can be anywhere from you know, about 90, 70, 80, 90, up all the way up to a $500 bottle um, that I tasted a while back. Um, okay, what people think, or let's see, tasty notes. Radiant amber is the color. The aroma is downright succulent with layers of mango. Oh, maybe that's what I was tasting. Pineapple, banana, guava, phyllo puff pastry, and old wood spice. The palette opens up with lemony, Tastes crusty brown sugar, dried apricots. I was thinking apricots, actually. I didn't say it. Grilled pineapple, warm oak, and a dash of vanilla caramel sauce. The finish is long with a complex melange of fruit notes that go in and out. I would definitely agree with that. Like, I think that's what I was also tasting. Um, but anyway, I hope you get a chance to have a little sample of this. It sounds like it's very affordable, so you could get some. Um, maybe, I don't know if you're interested in trying it and uh, I look forward to sharing more with you in the future. Cheers. Mm -hmm.